Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, entered into them. And that's via the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And they stood up on their feet. See, and us standing up on our feet is ultimately, you know, us being raised from that dead state. Us receiving the understanding of who we were. All right, which is the beginning point of us going from glory to glory all the way to the chariot. All right? And as we stood up on our feet, great fear fell on them which saw them. And we're at that point right now. So what this chapter is giving you, all right, is the Israelites in a dead state. You're being ultimately judged. But the Lord having mercy on us via a remnant by sending down the Holy Spirit. You see, and the order to that started with a man by the name of Abba Bivens, all right, which ultimately was at the forefront of our ministry, Elijah the prophet. And from that point, the prophets went out. And as the prophets went out, pursuant to Ezekiel the 37th chapter, the Israelites would get the understanding of who they were, and it would be an agent of water that would be poured upon the dry ground, pursuant to Ezekiel the 44th chapter. And great fear has fell on them which saw us. That's why they're trying to demonize us. And from the point of us waking up, we would go out, preach, prophesy. That's where the great fear would fall upon our enemies. And the very next verse says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, as we're going to be beamed up into the chariots. All right, and receive the fulfillment of the new covenant, the new bodies. All right, all marriages and covenants are fulfilled in the secret chamber. Well, the chariot is that secret chamber as it is written in the book of Isaiah, the 26th chapter, in the 20th verse. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as if it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. All right, so that secret chamber is symbolizing that cloud as it says here in Revelation 11 and 12 and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither let's get the book of Matthew the 24th chapter in the 31st verse it says and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven unto the other and the great deliverance will be here in Babylon the Great, the Valley of Dry Bones. All right, the spiritual Sodom in Egypt. All right, where we lay dead as a nation, detached from the understanding. Where the image of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua was completely crucified and X'd out. All right, but here it is. We're back through the Holy Spirit with life that has entered into us. Starting with the name of the Most High God, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai. So verse 12 says, after we raised up, they heard a great voice from heaven, that's that trumpet, saying unto them, come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Okay, they ascended up in a cloud, so our enemies saw us raise up from the dead state, receiving the Holy Spirit, all right, because through the Holy Spirit of promise, we understand who we are, the name of our power, the name of His only begotten Son, our mission through the unsealing of the book, all right, through the Holy Spirit, we get to go into the volume of the book and now have understanding of what's written in the Bible and go out and proclaim it. And through that, a remnant will be gathered, but this world will be condemned. So they're going to see us raised from that dead state, and they're going to also watch us get beamed up and to receive fulfillment of life, to go into those secret chambers and receive the fulfillment of the second covenant where our Lord, the Most High God, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai, will fully dwell in us as a bride. And at the same hour, there was an earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain 7,000 men, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. All right, we're even going to be like, wow. So we get beamed up, it's going to be synonymous with a great earthquake, which is destruction of Babylon the Great. You see, and when you get Revelation, the 19th chapter, after the great whore is judged, Revelation 19 and 1, and after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord. All right, the most high God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh 
for true and righteous are his judgments. For he have judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth. With her fornication he have avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they say hallelujah and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And when you jump to verse 7 it says let us be glad and rejoice and give honor unto him. For the marriage of the lamb is come. And his wife hath made herself ready. So when we get beamed up into those chariots. As Paul said, I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. And the elect will be presented because they will be covered under that blood. And when we get beamed up into those chariots, the book of 2nd Edras, the second chapter, gives you an understanding of what goes on in that chariot. This is the book of 2nd Edras, chapter 2 and 35. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. See, and the Lord is going to put that light in us. That's why he says in the book of Revelation, the second chapter, I'm going to give you the day start. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify of my Savior openly. And that's what we're doing. And great fear has fell upon our enemy because we're testifying of our Savior openly. Oh, receive the gift that is given you. And be glad, giving thanks unto him that have led you to the heavenly kingdom. See? And that's what's happening through the Holy Spirit. Arise and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. Which departed from the shadow of the world. Right? They love not their lives unto death. And have received the glorious garments of the Lord. The glorious garments is fulfilled in what? The new bodies. You see, it says... Take thy number, O Sion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. And how have we fulfilled the law? All right, by keeping the testimony, by remaining faithful, and ultimately not budging, not bound the knee to the image of Baal. We keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability, but we also have to keep the order, all right, of remaining faithful, not taking the charagma, Flee in the shadow of this world. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hollowed, set apart. Starting with the 144,000 under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, with the 12 disciples being in their order at the head of that. Okay, and then you have a large multitude of men, women, and children who are going to be gathered from the four corners of the earth. That body will be hollowed, set apart, the first fruits. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. You see, and when you get Revelation, the 15th chapter, when we get beamed up, it says this, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, Meaning as we get beamed up, we're going to be able to look down at the destruction of our enemies pursuing the Psalms of the 91st chapter. And them that had gotten victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand up on the sea of glass having the harps of the Most High. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of the Most High, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou king of the saints. So we're going to sing the song of Moses, just like as we got delivered out of Egypt. Moses sung songs, all right? And the children of Israel, Miriam, they sung songs of victory over Pharaoh, who was what? Drowned in the sea. Well, the horse and the rider, all right, in this time that is going to be drowned in fire and taken down, all right, is the biblical Edomites, the modern day Pharaoh. So let's go back, 2nd Edras chapter 2 and 42, and I, Edras, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they praised the Lord with songs. See? After we get delivered, we're going to be singing the song of victory over our enemies, just like Moses. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marvel at greatly. See, he was more exalted, and that's speaking of the Son of the Most High, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. 
and he set crowns on their heads, all right? According to our rank, starting with our King David, the head disciple, Peter, okay? All of us will receive crowns, all right? And rewards based upon everything that has been forepromised, all right, before the foundation of the earth. Because as we receive these crowns on our head, all right, it gives us our authority, all right, that we long to have back in the heavens, but also that authority is coming to the earth. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? And he answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing, all right, these old bodies and have put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the Most High God, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, now are they crowned and receive palms. All right, which palms represent victory. And I said unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and that giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of the Most High God, Yahweh, whom they have confessed in the world. Then begin I to greatly commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And ultimately, as we are crowned, what happens afterward is that Revelation, the 21st chapter, Revelation 21 and 2, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, refreshed, given new bodies, New Jerusalem. In times past, everything we knew was tied to a physical tabernacle. Well, now, New Jerusalem, the new teaching of peace, will come out of the people directly, the elect, the governing body. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, because now we will have the new covenant. We will fully be brought back to the Most High through Yahweh Shai and have those new bodies. We'll fully, all right, be brought back to the Heavenly Father through the blood of Yahweh Shai, man perfected a bride adorned for her husband are the new bodies and i heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of god is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and god himself shall be with them and be their god so new jerusalem as we are beamed up changed transformed as paul talks about in the twinkling of an eye we shall all be changed we're not going to stay in the spiritual realm, in the chair. We're going to come down to establish order on earth. That is New Jerusalem after they are crowned by the son of the most high God, Yahweh himself, Yahweh Shai. According to their rank and authority, they're going to come back down onto the earth and establish rulership, establish judgment. All right. And ultimately, the law shall go forth of Jerusalem at that point. The teachings of peace will come out of Yahweh Shai, starting with the 12, then the rest of the 144,000, and the large multitude. And at that point, as it says in verse 4, And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write, for these words are faithful and true. Yahweh, watch him, Yahweh, watch him, Yahweh.